guys. Let's uh, <laughs> let's move on to the fight of the night that we all thought was amazing. The atmosphere was just crazy in that arena. And I'm talking about Inglewood, California, the rediscovered and redefined forum. We've been there for uh, Alvarado Marquez. We've been there for Monroe, uh, Triple G, and now we're there for Quadras versus Chocolatito. To me, that atmosphere was something I haven't felt since probably Chavez Martinez. Mexicans, Nicaraguans, they were going crazy, they were chanting, they were just in and out. My favorite part of the entire night was for the 20 seconds that Quadras decided to move, everybody started booing him. I'm like, this is boxing, guys. <laughs> and you know he has to move, right? But that just to me shows the passion and dedication of those fans. The fact that a little Nicaraguan coming in for his first fight at 115 can sell over 7,000 tickets in Los Angeles, a demographic that is mainly Mexican, showed a lot, proved a lot, that HBO has done the right thing with the kid. They have promoted him right, they have set him up correctly, and they are doing what they need to do to not only showcase him, but showcase the lower weights. And that's something we've missed probably in the last decade or so. I, I, I was so your thoughts on that, man? I was telling another media member, I'm like, I've never seen this many Nicaraguan. Every single Nicaraguan in L.A. is sure. <laughs> <laughs> like every yeah. single You're one. Right. Like, You're right. But that environment was just, it, it was beautiful. Like, I, like you, you compared it to uh, Chavez Martinez. I remember being at um, Goto Margarito, and obviously that's a lot bigger scale. Yeah. But um, but it was just it was like that. Whenever one guy would do one thing, that fan that that man's fans were like up in a roar. Whenever the other guy, as soon as the other guy countered, that 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 person's fan was in a roar. Like it was a beautiful environment. It was one of the best fights I've ever been I've ever been in the scene live for sure. Um, I thought Chocolatito did enough to win. Um, he was a, I've never seen him that aggressive before. He was like on his ass the whole time, like he was suffocating him the whole time. And yeah, he looked more beat up at the end of the fight, but you know, we all know that doesn't necessarily mean you, you know you lost the fight just because your your eyes are swollen and all that stuff. But I mean, he just he's one of the most amazing fighters I've ever seen. He's so fluid. He's just he's, he's beautiful to watch. Your thoughts, Fred, on that night? Because obviously you were there too, and uh -huh. just your thoughts on the night. I uh, the crowd it felt okay. like twenty thousand people. Yeah, like and for real. Yeah, like if it felt like uh, indoor stub hub, big fight at stub hub. You get what that I'm saying? Like it was times three. Like triple G at stub hub. Mm -hmm. it felt like, it. Yeah, it was it was electric. Um, I thought Chocotito won every round by like a point or two. Like like Quadras was doing like a great job counter punching. Like if he had power on his left hook, it would be a completely different fight. He landed that left hook about fifteen or twenty times clean. I'm like, dude, gonna move back up, but. I think I want to. I would love to see the rematch. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Quadras is up for it. You know what I mean? Or even Dallas. <laughs> no, I know he, he says he is. is but you know, you got to remember, he has a team. Yeah, he may not be into it. Yeah, so yeah. right. But the fight was gold, man. The fight was lit, was boxing gold. You know what I mean? What more can you ask for? You know, two guys at one fifteen giving everything that they had. You know what I mean? And, uh, uh, like he said, man, the crowd was just on their feet. I mean, it didn't feel like 7,000. It felt like 21,000. Like they were on you. Like, it was insane, uh, man. I mean, one of the best fights I've seen this year live. And I think we're all lucky just to be there, just to be part of history, you know, mm -hmm. and winning this fourth title. But like I mentioned before, going back to um, the old titles, I would like to, I know Gonzalo said he was remain at, what, 115 pounds, but I would like for him to go up to 118 one day to capture the Bantamweight title, so then he can actually be a real two-division champion at 112 and 118, because maybe some of you don't remember, we had weight classes that were eight weight classes, not 17 weight classes. Now, some of these weight classes may be separated by three pounds, and it may not sound like a lot, and I know it is, but nowadays, in modern boxing, you become a five-division champion. I would like to see him go up to 118, um, and get a title there so he can become a legitimate two division champion. Don't get me wrong, his accomplishment, even today, four division champion, that, that says a lot. But I don't know, I'm a little more of an old school, you know, okay. boxing. I have, I have that old soul, and I, I know so much about the 20s and the early 1900s and the 30s. Um, but back to the fight, it was a great fight, nonetheless. Well, by the looks of his cheeks, you're going to get your wish. You will have, <laughs> have to go up the 118. <laughs> right? Yeah. I stated in the intro, I said that we are from SoCal, we are media people. Do you think we have been spoiled here at SoCal? Because as again, of late? Again, okay, oh, okay. Yeah, right? 2013, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 2013, we had Bradley versus Provodnikov, fight of the year. We had, in 2014, we had Molina uh, Matisse, fight of the year. 
I don't recall what was the fight of the year last year in 2015. What, what was the name? Did you say Bradley Provanico? Yeah, Bradley Provanico was 13. That, and so, and now this year, we not only did we get Vargas Salido, which is the head runner, that's for, be, but now we have Chuck Now we have Chuck yeah. the Vargas as well. Porter Thurman. That was a great I think, fight. Yeah, yeah. Porter okay. Thurman was a good but, fight. But I'm saying right now, I think, if, yeah, if, if you would like to do a poll of which one you think probably would be the lead, it would be Salido Vargas probably right now is sure. the lead. But. Thurman Porter would probably be a close second, but now again we saw this fight, and this is a candidate for fight of the year. I so you think here in SoCal we're a little bit slow? I when think it comes I would go with like that. Yeah, I think I would go with Quadras uh, Gonzalez as number two as far as skill wise. Yeah, because they yeah. showed a lot of skill, but a lot of heavy artillery. Quadras showed a lot of skill. And but sure. I think what lost him in that fight was that he kind of lacked a little bit of confidence in the beginning. He did because he, he was like sure. He was going off his, then, off what he heard and then about he did the little, sh- the little yeah. uh, shoe shine. Yeah. <laughs> in the seventh round, did you guys catch that little oh, no, dance? No, 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 the yeah, yeah, he got popped. He yeah. got popped. You know what I was telling us on the top? I was like, this is the reason why Marvis Marvin Hager retired. He was like, y'all set me up for this shit against Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> I was thinking that. I was like, he was doing a flurry. And I was like, this is the same thing Sugar Ray Leonard did the last 20 well, seconds his all team, around. His team in the last 30 seconds would, would uh, shout out. Last 30 seconds, or they would shout, 30 seconds! Yeah. And then uh, Leonard right. would start doing his little shoe shine and start stealing the round. Uh-huh. Every round, every oh, every yeah. uh, 30 seconds, the end of that it. round, his team you would shout out. 30, 30 seconds! seconds. seconds. Wow. Just, I watched the fight up yeah. top because I wanted to, I was, I was, the reason why I watched the fight up top because, because of the crowd. I was like, yeah. I wanted to see the crowd react. So no, I said, so that's let what, me go up top and then 12th round I came down. That's what that's what they did and that's how he was stealed around. Mm-hmm. You gotta remember a judge, and I'm sure most judges have to be uh, trained on this, but just like anybody else, what do you remember? I remember the last couple of seconds of that round, mm-hmm. and I might sometimes be right. swayed to sure. getting into the other. Fight. And that's true because see, he, him saying that, I actually remember the first couple of seconds. The moment the bell ring, Quadras would come out and throw a three-hit combo, move out the way, make another two-hit, move out the way, well, and then aren't you the special? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I paid attention to the beginning of it, when you paid attention to the end of it. The one end round that really caught my attention was the last round. Chocolatito was dazed. Was. Chocolatito was hurt in that was. those those last ten seconds. I gotta watch Got it. Got caught. Watch it again and watch those last ten <laughs> seconds. Right before the bell rings, Quadras moves to his right and literally stands behind him with Chocolito just like this. Doesn't move, he just stays there and then the bell rings. Really? And I'm like, what the heck just happened? But he got dazed, he got hurt. Again, you saw it at the end when we were all in the room with him and everything, how his face was compared oh, to Quadras. Brutal. Quadras looked like I just went to, through a sparring session. Wow. Chocolatito looked like he was hit by a car. Uh-huh. He yeah, was yeah. crushed, his eye socket and everything. But and Quadra's, face looked, look, hey, look. Quadra's face looked good, his back didn't look no. <laughs> Very questionable. Very questionable. Roy, Roy had a point about that, about the face thing. He was saying that, you know, when you're a fighter and you take a lot of, you're in a lot of wars and you're you're in a lot of brutal fights, like that happened. That eventually just happens. Oh, really? right. You get okay. when you get hit, you That's just get so much He's like, when you haven't been in as many wars, you haven't been in as many battles. You know, your skin's a little tougher. You do, it doesn't it doesn't get beat up like that. I mean, it's the first time I've heard that, but mm. it comes so now I know what happens to uh, Cotto and, and Rosado. Mm. <laughs> right? Now, now I know what happens to those line. guys. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. You know, it would have been interesting about uh, Farjas uh, Gonzalez had it been a fi- uh, fifteen round fight. That would have been interesting. How, Back in the day, how many fights would be interesting? How they all been fifteen? No, but you got to wonder who would come out on top. Yeah. Cause both guys just kept coming. And Quadras would death because he won in my eyes. He won. Last the second half. Most of that he won half. eleven and twelve like decisively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was long miles, yeah. compared to uh, Gonzalez. Mm-hmm. Very long, mm-hmm. and he was a lot taller than I expected. Mm-hmm. He had more in the tank, I think, towards the end. He did. The he spurts did, of yeah. energy that both both just mm-hmm. threw out in the middle of the rounds. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. Like Quadras would throw combos here. Cholito would come back, rally himself, and again, like you guys said, back and forth. The audience. What did the judges get swayed by that? So when both crowds.